Coach uh, Ryan Trost with This is American Rugby. Um, what can you tell us about um, what, uh, what, what we saw out wide there? So some of the defense seemed to get unlocked quite often there with Keith Earls. Yeah, we, we were at fast uh, today. We were disappointed by the performance. Um, yeah, we, we defensively uh, had some issues around our setting, uh, which cost us. So obviously, clearly in this series, we're going to have to get set faster. And, um, so yeah, that was, that's, and also probably the lack of defensive uh, repeat sets that were clean as well to create pressure. So I think that was possibly an epic thing. So um, it, it exposed a couple of guys in our system as well. So that's important to find that out. Um, and then I thought, uh, didn't expect our scrum, first half scrum to be, to be, to lose the inches. And uh, we certainly did that um, on his tension scrum time and that, you know, their, ability, their eventual caterpillar walk, you know, um, pay dividends um, about them to exit easy. So they found the front 50, uh, you know, very easily. Um, so we didn't get through a lot of attack. Um, so there are probably two areas where, where that we'll need to go back and uh, address in the next week. Matt. Uh, Coach, Matt McCarthy from Rugby Wrap Club. Hi, Matt. Do you, how you doing? What do you say to American fans that think, okay, they had the Irish had 12 people, 12 players missing on the Lions tour, but what they don't understand is that the guys that were playing today for Ireland, they're playing for that jersey to stay on their team, and it's one of the top TV teams in the world. It's one of the top teams in the world. Yeah, they, they, you know, they've got to be committed. They, they connected very well, and clearly the, the program is, uh, is bringing through some outstanding athletes. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, it all comes down to the coming out here, he's a team unit. Um, we missed that opportunity today. Um, it surprised me, I thought we would, um, based on uh, on our background recently and uh, and the knowledge of, of, of the group. Um, but the speed of the speed of the game and I think the humidity, you know, like I think the ball and play was over 40 odd minutes. Uh, we weren't surprised by that because we were prepared for that, but uh, it, it hurt us, especially uh, defensively. U.S. team ever expect to compete with like, foreign players, like your best European players, a lot of them quite awful in the head for this, this game. Can you ever compete or come close to cheering with you without the like, descent of the pro team? Yeah, we can. We can. It's um, We've got a got a good model intermittently as well. We, we've swapped it. You know, we, when I first started about a year and a half ago, we were 70% overseas, 30% home. Um, we've swapped that. So some of the guys that are available possibly wouldn't have made it as well because uh, that speed of the game out there is, is a lot faster than what some of them are delivering. So um, it really comes down, in my view, um, how we as USA Rugby support the athlete um, around the program and in terms of the recovery strategies, um, in terms of resourcing the, the guys uh, to create a far more healthy athlete. You know, these guys put in a lot of work. Um, they're very professional and they're still on per diem as well uh, as athletes. So. Uh, um, they're committed. Um, all we've got to do is just uh, become a lot more connected. Um, yeah, yeah, a centralised program would uh, would help these guys as well. And playing in a in a global competition, you know, something like Pro 12, uh, where there's an audience uh, both in America and, and in, in Britain and Ireland, um, would be would be superb. Um, but domestically, uh, sevens college and. Um, you know, Britain and France, they all, all the players arrive at different levels. Can you see that pro club thing happening? From, you've been in the system there for a while. Can you realistically see something like that happen? I think it's got to happen for, for USA rugby. Um, you know, we're a huge country, but we're still a very small dot in terms of rugby terms. Yeah, as you can see today, the crowd and the audience was fantastic. It's one of the bigger, audi bigger audiences that we've had. And I think it's important that the guys do play in front of these, these audiences and Certainly here on the on the, on the east, you know, closer to Britain and Ireland as well, um, there seems a, a very strong rugby community here. So that's that's important. I think the Eagles need to play uh, in front of more of their their populace where, where rugby is where rugby is known. Mitch, uh, Doug Coyle, DJ Coyle Rugby. Okay. What are some of the positives you can take out of today's match in preparation for Georgia and Canada? Yeah, we never. Um, we never, never gave up. Um, we tried to put tempo on the game as well. Um, yeah, we we 
basically stuck to our mentality. At times, our, our mentality and our body language was tested. Um, I think the start surprised us. I think we expected you know, a better result from... Uh, um, so, yeah, um, we just looked like a new team today, uh, in my view, just a typical new team. I th as I said to you earlier, I thought we would have been a lot more connected. That surprised me. But I'm not concerned about that. We'll, we'll become uh, very connected over the over the week and, uh, and, the, and the weeks coming. Yeah, Brett. Uh, Brett Anker with Rugby Today. Can, uh, Coach, as, as everybody knows, congratulations on your new job after Thank the... You. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how the team has kind of responded to that news and your kind of mindset as you go into these important World Cup qualifiers, knowing you're not going to be uh, around for the World Cup the following year? Well, firstly, it's not about me. It never has been about me. It's been about uh, Nate, you know, Blaine and Todd and, and a leadership group you know, um, running the team and the team running the team. So, and it, uh, at the end of the day, we're all professionals and we're entitled to make decisions. I've made a personal decision for, yeah. on the basis of my family and my career. So really, for me, um, my focus is on, on this job. Um, there's a lot of planning gone into this, into this month and uh, the job hasn't been done yet. So ultimately, that's where my focus is. And um, you know, wherever I've gone, I've left sustainable models. And I'd like to think that this model can be evolved and, and grown. There's actually something special here for, for the guys to hold on to. So um, yeah, for me, it's not about me. And uh, this whole month's not about me. This whole month's about USA Eagles and, and the athletes uh, achieving a, a goal. Yeah, Matt. Nate, Matt McCarthy, Nathan Clark. What's um, up, Matt? How was it running around the field with the Giants against you like Devin Connor and Keenan Keen Healy? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's good. That's the experience we need. Like, uh, I think going into the game before we walked out, uh, Quill, the co-captain, was talking about we, as Americans, don't get too many cracks at top top four, top five teams in the world, you know? So when we when we do get the chance, we, we got to drain whatever we can out of it. So whether that's you know, getting 50 plus points scored on us and, and taking what we can learning wise out of that or whether it's, you know, sticking it to them and getting a couple of tries out of our own. Um, I think there's a lot of learning that happened today and uh, that, that's an experience that it's really tough to get unless you get out there and are playing at that level. So, you know, 40, 40 odd plus minutes ball and play today that all of us got to experience at a very high pace. So that's going to pay off um, later on in the month. and. You guys should be able to see that come through. We got time for two, maybe three more questions. Yeah, right. Yeah. Nate, um, as as captain and as scrum half, how how did you feel about today's uh, communication and link ups with, with throughout the back row and from the from the pack? Well, I think I think we're in a tough place because our, our, our scrum wasn't necessarily the most stable, and uh, the breakdowns were, you know, a, a bit sometimes clean, sometimes not. So it, there was a lot of things going on, a lot of um, a lot of things that we can do better to make sure that that doesn't happen again uh, later on in the month. So but as far as preparation and stuff, I thought Davey Tomlaw had a, had a great game at eight man, um, had a lot of carries, well connected, handled the pressure really well, ate the ball when he needed to. I think I got into a position where I had to clean up, clean up some bad ball and the boys actually responded quite well. Um, so. You know, the more we can just make sure that, that our platform's solid so that we don't get in those situations, the more, uh, the more you'll see the connection amongst us actually, uh, you know, benefit us into points and into line breaks and into game line so that we can be a better attacking team. Yeah, last question, guys. Well, I think I think it's important that it gets around for now because people need to be in the stadium like they were today to get to, to get to witness it and get to experience it. Like uh, I, I do a lot of coaching and stuff like that, and I, I know kids were in the stands, like youth youth, you know, rugby players were in the stands, and they got to see international level rugby for the first time. You know, that that's the kind of stuff that you know sticks with people, sticks with sticks with their parents, sticks with the people who play club rugby from all different levels. You know, so you know the East Coast having a, having a.
game like we had today is, is actually a huge win for American rugby just because we tend to, you know, it's been a Western dominated, you know, rugby's been dominant in the West Coast, as far, so to speak, and they get a lot more opportunities to play high level rugby out there, so to speak, with um, more games are scheduled out there and stuff. So I think it's important that we get you know, some type of catalyst. I think Chicago was a good attempt in that as well, playing the All Blacks there, playing Australia there. Um, I think that's been a really good uh, nucleus for, you know, an exciting, exciting game in Chicago. So you got to get everywhere for now to keep inspiring people to come out and, and, and let the game grow. But it, there's a couple places where there's been good turnout. So why don't, why don't we keep building those areas, you know, and, and keep focused on those. I think it's six years or seven years since we've been, since we've played here. I mean, it's, it's too long. Thanks, Nate. Thanks, Coach Mitchell. We'll have a coaching captain from my team momentarily. Appreciate it.